part of what we're about is uh, looking at life together. We're a community that looks at life together from a secular perspective. And uh, we try to bring a lot of different voices up and hear those voices and learn from each other. So unlike some other uh, Sunday morning gatherings you may be familiar with, we don't have one talking head who proclaims the truth. Um, you know, it's, it's a different model. And as part of that model, uh, we do something called a community moment where we invite someone from our community to come up and share, and it can be anything. It, a lot of times it's your journey to free thought. Uh, sometimes it's an idea you've got from a book you've read, a movie you saw, an idea you'd like to test out on the community. We're just thinking out loud together. It's a wonderful time. If you'd like to do a community moment, just get with me and we'll get you on the calendar. Uh, and uh, this week we have a veteran community moment and main speech and musician. She does all kinds of things around here. Let's give a welcome to Marie Angel. Okay. Oh, come on. How are you doing? <laughs> it's good to see everybody. It seems like we're really just, there's even more of us because we're all packed tightly together. So that's kind of nice, that little illusion. I uh, decided today that I would talk about uh, John Burden Sanderson Haldane. Anybody in here uh, familiar with... Uh, Professor Haldane, I, I, I figured you would be. Tell me what you know about him. He was just a great scientist. <laughs> he was. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that kind of sums it up in that he was um, known as Jack to his friend, his family, not to his friends always, professor or prof to his students, JBS to most others, or Mr. Haldane. And he made many critical discoveries in genetics. He coined the terms clone, cis, and transgender. And he introduced the idea of test tube babies, which Aldous Huxley, his friend and contemporary, immediately used in his book, Brave New World. <laughs> so um, he had a lot of influence. He made contributions to practical improvements in understanding dye pressure, blood chemistry, the mathematics of biological size, and he shaped the field of biochemistry. In fact, he's often credited with creating the field of biochemistry and made it what it is today. This is not a complete list. He was a prolific writer with a gift for explaining scientific principles and discoveries in an engaging and clear fashion. And he had an awesome mustache. <laughs> And he has almost, because he was brilliant, bold, blunt, body, brash, big in body, personality, and accomplishments. And all of that meant that he has almost killed me to try to condense this into 10 minutes, maybe a few questions at the end. But I'm going to give it a try. And I'm going to talk fast, and I have to refer to my notes a lot, which I don't like to do. But anyway, November is his birth month. He was born on November 5th in 1892, right at the close of the Victorian era, which is important but I can't talk about because there's no time. But it did have an influence on the times very much in the, um, the energy that he brought to science. He could read by the time he was three. By age five, he could write well enough to leave little notes around his house that said, I hate you. <laughs> Thus, he set in motion a precedent that he maintained for the rest of his life of always sharing his opinion. <laughs> now I have to use my finger to uh, turn this over. JBS's scientist father, John Scott Haldane, not to make things any more confusing, studied mind gases and other aspects of depth in chemistry. And since he had all this homegrown labor, he put his young son, JBS, to work he drew blood for experiments. He taught him to analyze gas and, and uh, record the measurements. He took him down into the mines to conduct gas studies, teaching him how to breathe in poison air. 
All of this before the age of eight. This was in a time before CPS. <laughs> Apparently his mother, instead of being horrified, took it rather in stride. Maybe she knew what she was getting into when she married John Scott. But in any case, JBS often said that his father, who conducted many of the experiments not only on his son but on himself, taught him courage. That was something that JBS put to good use in the rest of his life. Although I think his mother deserves a little credit too. <laughs> At university, JBS started a degree in mathematics but changed his mind because he figured that he knew plenty about mathematics, which was obviously true because his scientist father had begun to use him to do his mathematical calculations in uh, his own scientific papers when JBS was still in his teens. So JBS decided to study classical literature and in fact, he never earned a science degree. Let that soak in a little bit. One of our great scientists. World War I came along, and ever eager for experience, JBS enlisted, and he served on the front lines. He didn't like to be sidelined, although he eventually was through a wound, but he began immediately to improve an experiment with weaponry, which at the time was as dangerous to the user as it was to the target. And he earned the nickname BAMO. <laughs> and I think he liked that. But of course, in addition to that, he made several other advances, along with his father who studied uh, gases and uh, improved the use of gas masks. But there's again too many to get into today in this speech. His experiences in the war hardened his stance, though, against authority, which he did not like, and revealed religion. He called chaplains cowards. His experiences also made him very vocal about rejecting religion. And he said, when I set up an experiment, I assume that no god, no angel, no devil is going to interfere with its course. And that assumption has been justified by such success as I have achieved in my professional career. I should therefore be intellectually dishonest if I were not also atheistic in theory. And I should be a coward if I did not state my theoretical views in public. Again, JBS was no coward. Using the example of his father who experimented on himself and his young son, JBS began to experiment on himself, his wife, anyone who happened to be in the vicinity, and people volunteered for this. They subjected themselves to convulsions, to vomiting, to broken eardrums, which, yes, good times. JBS Riley noted, these usually healed, but if not, although one is slightly deaf, one can blow tobacco smoke out of the ear in question, which is a social accomplishment. <laughs> He did all of this in the name of advancing science, although, as JBS himself noted, I doubt whether, given my psychological makeup, I should have found many greater thrills in a hundred lives. Or as the blog Science is Fun says, he friggin loved it. <laughs> in his free time, he wrote popular articles and books on science, politics, and everything else he had an opinion about which was everything. everything. <laughs> he also wrote a children's book called My Friend Mr. Leakey, which was a first-person style account of his imaginary friend, a magician. And he described himself in this book as a professor doing sums to make new kinds of primrose and cats. Though fiction, I don't doubt that J.B.S. Holiday could have done this. He could have done sums to make new kinds of cats if he put his mind to it. He was probably somewhat shy. He was at times awkward and socially tone deaf. And he compensated by being loud, although he might have been a little deaf. And he was inappropriate. And he really liked to shock people. At dinner parties, he would talk of unseemly things. For example, exploding body parts. Although, let us be fair, he really liked exploding body parts. He was probably really obnoxious to be around unless you really liked him. 
He would have fit into Oasis pretty well. <laughs> like many scientists at that time, JBS really took to communism and socialism and became quite politically active and joined the Communist Party. This was in large part due to his sense of social justice that he developed with his dad working down in the mines. But he also felt that people should be treated equally. And he also was very keen on the fact that communism and socialism embraced science and technology at a time when there was a lot of resistance to the changes that were being wrought by all of the new technology and scientific advances. But he held a very pragmatic view. He noted that he doubted that there would ever be a completely socialized British Empire in the United States. He akin that to an elephant turning somersaults or a hippopotamus jumping a hedge. He eventually broke with the Communist Party over totalitarianism in the USSR, but he still expressed some admiration of Stalin and Lenin. So let's just say JBS couldn't be right about everything. And I'm going to switch over here. In 1956, he and his wife moved to India because, as he joked, he would no longer have to wear socks. <laughs> 60 years is enough. He took to the culture. He began to wear Indian dress most of the time. He had an affinity for India's embrace of socialism. He even became a citizen of India, although he leveled plenty of criticism at the government, as he felt was his duty. And because JBS Halvey. On December 1st, tomorrow in fact, is the anniversary of his death at age 72 in 1964 of colon cancer. He left his body to science, which he considered fitting to continue his usefulness. He said of himself, the greatest compliment to me is when people refer to something I discovered without mentioning me at all. This has come to pass because so much of his work has simply become part of the framework of our modern science. But his biographer, Ronald W. Clark, wrote it more eloquently. He made science comprehensible. He made it exciting. He showed it could be humane, and it could be motivated by the most impeccable of moral justifications. He fired his listeners with what could be called the romance of science. Listening to him, one could see Tennyson's fairy tales of science turning into reality before one's eyes. J.B.S. Haldane, scientist, rationalist, always and thoroughly his own self, big, and with other, as others have gone before me, he has bent me, but he has not broken me. Badass of science.